Welcome back to another video today we'll be listening to part 8 of what if Issei was almost killed by Rias Grimori don't forget to like share and subscribe for more now let's begin. Chapter 36, Runaway, Scene, Underworld, Grimori Mansion. As of this day, the first ever, Opai Dragon Hunt, will begin in one week. Tomorrow morning, we will begin broadcasts and get this thing going. The entire group of people, including a smirking Azazel, nods. Sears X continues after she takes a sip of water. As far as the teams are concerned, technically, we will be viewed as separate teams. This will be a facade however. In actuality, every single person in this room will be working together in one fashion or another. After all, I will assume that everyone's focus is solely on Issei, rather than competition at this point. Again, the room nods. Sears X now begins to smile. As far as that is concerned, we are all in agreement then. Asia then squeaks out something. Sir, Sears X Sama, the mentioned devil, including the rest of the room turn their heads toward Asia. Sears X smiles. Yes, Asia Chan, blushing, the little blonde devil nun stands up and bows. Sears X Sama, about Issei. When we find him, and WE will find him, how are we going to approach him? I mean, I don't know what happened to him or anything, but, what if, Xenovia places her hand on the nun's shoulder. Go ahead, Asia, tell us. Asia looks at the ex-knight and moves a stray tear from her own cheek while smiling. Turning her head back towards Sears X, Asia continues. What if Issei ran away? What if Rhea? What if, she, scared him? Think about it. I mean, if, if, if she did that to me, I know I would want to run away in an end stray be damned. Sears X widens her eyes at this proclamation. The rest of the room, aside from a smirking Azazel, are quite shocked, firstly at the swear word that Asia had just used and finally, the possibility that Issei ran away rather than kidnapping. The nun now sits back down and begins to cry as she places both of her little hands over her face. Kiba's shock now changed into a look of rage. Everyone jumped at the sudden sound of a chair being tossed across the room. This was followed up by none other than Kiba, striding out of the meeting room in an uncharacteristic jog. The room was silent, however Kiba mentioned something before he slammed the door shut behind him. I think I am going to be sick, excuse me. Nobody knew what to say or do, so they let the distraught ex-knight to his own devices as he left the meeting. Scene, Yasaka Castle, partner, I want to try something, so hear me out. Panning from the scene, we are once again in the backyard garden of Yusaka Castle. We can see a red-clad Issei, adorned in his signature red dragon emperor scalemail armor. Sitting on the elevated wooden porch, Kunuo, Yusaka, Kuroka and Ophis are watching while drinking tea. Earlier, in the room in the last chapter, Ophis mentioned how it would be beneficial for the Sekiruti to explore his newfound abilities as soon as possible. This would ensure that his new body would adapt to Dedrag's power, while at the same time, allowing the new fox spirit to begin repairs on essentials, such as magic and soul stability, something Issei was lacking in extreme ways. With that, Issei thought it would be a good idea to take out two birds with one stone. Entertaining his new, daughter, and getting some well-needed training. What the boy didn't assume was that he would be center stage as the entirety of the Yasaka household, including guards and staff alike, were also in the backyard, this made the teen rather nervous. This nervousness subsided the moment the drag spoke to him. Finally responding, Issei replies. Yeah, sure, what do you want me to do? The gauntlet on Issei's arm began to pulse with green light. Partner, I want you to shoot a dragon shot into the sky really fast. Don't ask me why, let's just say that I am. Curious, looking around him, seeing eyes and masks, all looking at him, Issei shakes off his inhibitions and begins to raise his arms into the air while looking into the cloudy sky. Kuroka began to twitch with anticipation as she was able to feel the strange spiritual energy, radiating from Issei. Yusaka noticed this and reached for the Neko's sleeve. Feeling this, Kuroka looked back at Yusaka with a grin. In a quiet voice, the Neko speaks up. This is gonna be perfect. In the voices of both Issei and Dedrag, Dragon shot. Instantly, a blast of wind knocked everyone down, who wasn't already sitting. Shooting from the arms of the Red Dragon Emperor, was nothing but a blinding light, just as bright as a thermonuclear bomb upon detonation. 
After the flash, we are treated to a display of intertwining lights of energy. Crimson red energies collided with a cacophony of blue fox fire. The size of this blast was also incredible, compared to a standard dragon shot, seven times larger to be precise. The sky above was now cloudless as the blast seemed to have atomized any and all moisture within a 70-kilometer radius. The drag then busted out laughing, almost maniacally. Partner. Hell yes. This is great. Issei looks at his gauntlet and tilts his head. You didn't even have to boost, not one time. If you had, well, let's just say that most barriers would have trouble attempting to contain such destruction and power. Good show partner, good show. Issei looked puzzled but was really happy at the same time. The teens, thoughts were interrupted as the entirety of the backyard garden began to clap, loudly. Chapter 37, Smite Smite, Scene Underworld, Grimori Mansion. Gasper, go after Kiba, please. The little white-haired boy, dressed in a female Kuo Academy uniform, dashes from his seat and off to the door without a reply or hesitation. Asia is in tears as Zenobia and now, Akino, are patting her shoulders. Meanwhile Irina stands up which gets attention from the room. Sirzak sama I would like to announce something important. Irina was smiling warmly which made the room lose some of the tense energy from before. Sirzak also stands and nods while returning a smile. Irina's smile was so infectious, that the rest of the room, even Azazel and Graphia, began to form smiles of their own. Irina continues with a very happy-sounding voice. I will be joining up with Gabriel-sama in the Opai Dragon Hunt. Just thought you all should know. Everyone's smile now turned into a frown along with a look of utter confusion. Scene, Dr. Kellogg's Insane Asylum, Underworld. In a large and padded room, we can see two small twin beds along each wall. Laying in these beds were no other than Rias Grimori and Kateria Leviathan. It was dark in the bedroom, suggesting it was evening. Both women seemed to be sleeping soundfully. All of the sudden, a small cracking sound could be heard. Both girls opened their eyes and sat up from their pillows, looking toward the sound. Toward the barred window, a purple-colored flash could be seen, along with lit sparks, falling to the padded floor, melting into the fabric. Kateria was the first to say something, though she kept her voice low. Rias Chan, see, I told ya. Our days of yogurt amemas are finally over. Rias gasped at the situation that lay in front of her. The crazy bitch was right, we are getting out of here. Finally, I can get my plan into motion. I will get Issei and rule over the underworld, yes, get my delicious cake and eat it too. Kateria isn't so bad, I think she understands me. More so than anyone I have met. What a great future ally. Sears X Onisama, you will rue the day. Scene, Yasaka Castle. The previous room, the den, was now, once again, inhabited by Yasaka, Kuroka, Ophis. Kunuo and Issei, all were gathered in front of the large television and watching, Hocus Pocus, as Halloween was tomorrow. Kunuo was singing along with the witches as the scene showed the three hags, on a stage, attempting to hypnotize people to kill themselves by dancing to death. In Issei's mind, this is a bit dark, for a kid movie I mean. Don't you think, the drag? I mean, I don't want the kid to become desensitized or anything like that. I worry, you know. Issei gets a response from inside. Foo 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 foo, partner, you sound like a father. I can't believe I am actually saying this, but holy shit, dude, you are becoming a man. Issei begins to blush. Meanwhile, Kuroka and Yusaka are both on each side of Issei, while Ophis is sitting on the ground next to Kunuo. Ophis has her back, leaning against Issei's legs. All at the same time, the three girls turn their heads to see a blushing Issei. Realizing this, Issei looks back at all three while turning his head, which finally ends looking directly at the back of Kunuo's head. As the little fox was still watching the movie, Issei opens his mouth and speaks up. Kunuo, you do know that this is just a movie. None of these people were actually under any spell. Even so, just remember that this kind of stuff only happens in Hollywood. It's not real, you understand, right kiddo? Yasaka, Kuroka and Ophis all begin to blush as their maternal instincts go into overdrive, seeing Issei being so paternal. Yasaka begins to chuckle, foo 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 foo. Issei, darling, you worry so much. It really makes me very happy to see you adjusting so well into our family. However, Kunuo, 
Red Dragon Kun is correct. This is just a movie. Being forced to dance until death is absolutely just make-believe, meant to scare, nothing more. Do you understand, my daughter? Kunuo finally looks behind her while nodding. She then places a finger toward her lips and says, shush. Ophis nods and continues to watch the movie. Kuroka has a vengeful grin which is aimed at the little princess. Yusaka is flustered but ignores that soon after Issei begins to laugh. Ha ha ha, yeah, you told us, kiddo. The movie continues uninterrupted. Scene, Underworld, Capital. Here we are now, preparing for the upcoming, Opai Dragon Hunt. As you can tell folks, we have a great deal of people here, registering for the event. You ma'am, can I ask why you are signing up? We can now see a news reporter, clad in a red miniskirt and matching blazer. She is holding a bone-shaped microphone and is holding it toward a blonde woman while waiting for a response. The woman in question was no other than Gabriel, who was standing next to Irina and several others. Wearing a full set of white and golden armor, the beautiful angel replies while winking one of her sky-blue eyes. Oh, that's an easy question. I want Issei. If I want something, I get it. It's that simple. Speaking of, you wouldn't happen to know of the Securities location, by and by. The smiling angel now has a grin as her blue eyes begin to glow. Nervously smiling at the angel, the reporter begins to shake her head rapidly while repeating, No, no, of course not, I am just a reporter. Just trying to do my job. Finding the reporter's words acceptable, the angel returns her usual smile and continues off, leaving the said reporter in a very shuttered state. The camera crew are also having sweat drops, plastered to the side of their heads, all in very nervous states. Instantly, the entire reporting team jumped at Irina yelling something toward them. Don't forget to tell us if you hear anything, K. Okay? Otherwise I'll smite you and all that stuff. The camera crew looks directly at the reporter. Seeing this, she just points her finger in the opposite direction and the group trot away from the Registration Location Chapter 38 Yusaka Tale Scene, Yusaka Castle, Late Evening Shortly after the craziness that was today, Yusaka decided to speak up about sleeping arrangements. Kuroka, Ophis, Issei and Kunua were all sitting at the dinner table. From the looks of things, it seems as though everyone had just finished a large meal. Yusaka realized how late it was getting and thought Issei, of all people, should get some rest. That wasn't the only thought running through the Fox Queen's head at the moment as she began to blush momentarily before continuing to talk. As the hours are getting late, I can make it a point to get the two of you runes of your own, I am sure even an infinite dragon needs her beauty sleep. Foo 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 foo. Ophis tilts her head at the comment as Kuroka grins. The Nako can tell something is up as she reads Yusaka's body language. Currently, everyone is seated from right to left. Yusaka, Issei, Kuroka, Ophis and finally, Kunuo. Issei's chair, once again, seemed to be moved closer toward the Fox Queen. At first, the team didn't notice this as his seat was in its normal position when he first sat down. Unknown to Issei, Yusaka was using her tails to slightly move Issei's chair, very slowly, inch by inch. By the time he finally realized how close he was to the yukai, a warm and soft tail worked its way up Issei's left leg. Looking at the fox now, Issei can only see an innocent half-crescent smile, the same smile that Yusaka has the majority of the time. Era era, Issei, sweetheart, do I have something on my face? The woman now faints embarrassment as she touches her own face, attempting to feel something out of the ordinary. Kuroka then spoke up, yeah, well, I was planning on sleeping on Issei's lap. After all, I am a cute kitty. N.Y.A. Yusaka turns her head toward Kuroka and scowls. Issei can feel the single tail tightening around his leg and thigh. Not tonight. Everyone in the room jumps in shock of the sudden and uncharacteristic outburst of the Fox Queen. Realizing what she had just done, Yusaka takes a deep breath and continues. Fu 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 fu. Yusaka is smiling again. I meant to say that my poor future husband Kun, Erm Issei, Fufu, needs some spiritual peace. Yes, that is it. Besides, it's my home and I call the shots. The Fox Queen's face now turned into that of a spoiled little girl, one who didn't want to share her new plaything. Issei noticed this and began to laugh. With her cheeks puffed out, Yusaka looks at the laughing team. What's so funny? Issei continues to chuckle, haha. 
Never mind, Yusaka-sama, you were just so cute just now. I promise, I am not making fun of you, but that was super cute. Yusaka looks flustered now as she begins to blush. Cute. He thinks I am cute. I'll show him cute. As the rest of the girls were also laughing at the situation, minus Ophis, who was just staring blankly at Issei, Yusaka stood up while placing a hand and gripping Issei's shoulder. Issei looks up at the fox queen who no longer has a childish looking face. Now we see a very seductive looking woman, sporting a grin. Issei. Come. Being pulled from his chair, the teen is dragged from the room by no other than a very assertive Yusaka. A moment goes by as the sliding doors close, then Kuroka speaks up. Well, I guess that settles that, at least for tonight. Say, any of you down for some Smash Brothers? I just happened to bring my Switch with me. Ophis looks toward Kunuo, Sensei, am I to understand that I am to squash a pair of brothers? Laughing out loud, the little fox princess shakes her head no. Ophis Chan, you are really funny, did you know that? Anyway, no, you don't kill anyone. It's a video game. Kunuo then looks at the Nekomata. Yeah, go get it, this will be fun. Kuroka then chuckles. Fu fu fu. Well, I would, but I fear I may be too old and frail, as you said earlier, princess. Kunuo shudders and then composes herself. I meant to say that you, Kuroka, are a beautiful cat girl, super young looking too. Smiling, Kuroka tackles Kunuo into a hug. That's right kiddo and don't you forget it. N.Y.A. Meanwhile, in Yusaka's master bedroom, we see the sliding door open abruptly. Being pushed through somewhat forcefully, Issei was confused as to the sudden action. Meanwhile, Yusaka had a very lustful looking smile as she mildly struggled to get the team through her bedroom door. Ugh. Yusaka-san, what gives? Okay. Okay, I'll go on in, no need to push me. Finally getting into the room, the light switch is turned on as the sliding door is quietly closed. Remembering this room from the night prior, Issei turned around toward the Fox Queen, wanting to know why he was forced into this place so quickly. Seeing an unfamiliar smile on the woman's face, Issei was gobsmacked. Then, from the depths of Issei's mind, he can hear a deep laugh. The laugh was that of Dedrag. Throwing his thoughts back at the dragon, Issei asked the question. Dude, really, what is so funny? Also, what's up with Yusaka right now? Waiting for a response from Dedrag, Issei noticed the said fox queen, slowly approaching. As if on instinct, Issei began to back up, moving closer toward the Japanese-style bed mat, unknowingly of course. Seeing this, the fox's smile began to grow. Era era, just a few more steps back and then I'll pounce my prey. He looks so confused right now, it makes me want to just eat him up. Issei finally receives a response from the drag as the dragon takes a brief break in between his laughing fit. Partner, foo foo foo, this will make us even. I told you that I would get you back. So I healed back some crucial information regarding this yukai. Foo 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 foo. Taking another step backwards as the fox took another step forward, Issei began to panic. The drag, what do you mean about, crucial, information? What are you talking about, stupid lazy dragon? As Issei took yet another step backwards, the dragon finally replied as his laughing died down to a giggle. Partner, tonight is a full moon, not to mention, All Hallows Eve. Issei tilts his head while not understanding anything the dragon was telling him. Fu 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 fu, you really are a dote, aren't you? Maybe if you spent more time researching the supernatural, since you happen to be one yourself, then you would know of the nine-tailed fox's mating cycle. At those words, two things became very clear. The first and most important thing was that Issei was no longer on his feet, no, he was now on his back. Feeling pressure on his front half, the teen released that he was being straddled by a very frisky looking fox queen. As if the first thing wasn't overwhelming enough, the second thing turned Issei's world upside down. Issei, you belong to me now, my husband. I have been patient long enough. You, Issei, like me, you have gone without any love for far too long. Tonight will be one of many, many sessions, in order to make up for that lost time. Now, take off your clothes, while you still can. Yasaka now showed off her fox-like canine teeth as if she was preparing for a meal. Chapter 39, Ingested Alive, Scene, Yasaka Castle, Morning, Kyoto, Japan. 
In the dining area of the large mansion, we see three people, all sitting at a Japanese-style low table. Kuroka, Kuno and Ofis were all eating individual pieces of toast with a fried egg on top. They were also watching what looked to be some cartoon on the small television in the room. After some time, as the three ate silently, sounds were heard. No, these were not the sounds of the cartoon, no, these were clearly moaning sounds. Loud and steady, Kuroka grabbed the remote to the television from Kuno and muted the program. As the Nekomata's ears began to twitch from the odd noises, Ofis turned her head toward where the sound was coming from. Kuno then looked at both women, then finally toward where Ofis was looking. Ofis speaks up, Sensei, clearly somebody is being attacked or possibly being eaten alive. Kuroka laughs but doesn't add anything to the conversation. Kuno shakes her head not knowing what that sound was. Ofis Chan, Kuroka Chan, as princess of this home, I declare that the three of us shall investigate. The two older ladies nod and the three leave the room and follow the sounds, which seem to intensify. Finally, the three are standing at a sliding rice paper door. They are able to see what looks to be Yusaka's silhouette, kneeling on her bed. Her tails were also seen, fluttering all over the bedroom as the sounds of multiple objects, falling to the floor, became more prevalent. All three were now looking at each other with different looks of confusion, however Kuroka had a small grin. While still continuing her stare at both Ofis and Kuno, Kuroka suddenly slid the sliding door open. A plethora of different things happened, all at once. Firstly, the scene that lay in front of all three girls, while they stood in the doorway, let's just say if Jaws could really hit the floor, they would be. Aside from a grinning Nekomata, a shocked infinite dragon god and a fox princess petrified at what they are seeing. Finally, focusing on the scene that lay in front of the shocked crowd, we see no other than Yasaka, in all of her naked glory, straddling an equally naked, Issei's head, between her thighs. The moment the sliding door opened, both Yasaka and Issei stopped what they were doing and looked toward the shocked women that showed different states of petrification. After what seemed to be like an eternity, Kuroka broke the ice by speaking up. NYA, looks to me that the infamous, Opai, dragon isn't just interested in boobs. Apparently, Thai Pai is on the menu too, era era. Ophis, finally realizing what was going on, immediately shielded the poor and desensitized fox princess's eyes, don't look, sensei. Familiar forest, underworld, you really think that, she, would know where he is. We see Saji, huffing and puffing, as he leans against Momo. He continues to complain. I mean, we've been at it for hours and nothing. Clearly, she doesn't want to be found. Damn it Hyodo, making me work so hard. Turning around and facing her pawn, Sona proceeds to flick Saji in the forehead as she gains a tick mark. Quit whining, we are on an important mission and I expect professionalism from all that serve the house of Citri. Turning back around, Sona continued on the path. Besides, she won't be out and about like other familiars here in the forest. There is supposed to be a large cave in this direction, we just need to keep our eyes open, Sona looks behind her at Saji once again. An hour mouths shut, Momo then whispers in Saji's ear. Don't worry, when we get to rest, I'll make it all worth it, shish now. Saji blushes and nods. Another 10 minutes went by, then Tsubaki spoke up. Stop, everyone, here it is, the cave entrance. The moment everyone stopped, nothing but silence and eeriness were the only sounds to be felt or heard. Sona and Tsubaki stood in front of the rest of the peerage, at the entrance of this cave. Deciding that walking into this dwelling was a bad idea, Sona did the only logical thing that came to mind. Hello, Dragon King, are you in there? I would like nothing more than to talk. After these words were uttered, silence was the only response. Tsubaki looked at Sona with a stoic look while shrugging her shoulders. Sona was about to say something, that was until Saji spoke up. Hey, dragon, it's about the red dragon emperor. Before Saji was able to be flicked once again, a response was heard, coming deep from within the cave. The drag, WHO is talking about that ass hat. WHO, in the fuck, are you? The voice was very deep and powerful, enough to get the entirety of Sona's peerage on their tiptoes. Sona, who was originally looking at her pawn, about to flick him, slowly turned back around, facing the cave. Then a sound, a rushing sound, 
crunching rocks, coming closer and closer. Sona mutters out loud, Saji, you idiot. Now, in the darkness of this cave, a pair of large and glowing blue orbs, which reveal two black slits for pupils. The said pupils dilate and focus on the pawn of the peerage. As everyone begins to back away, the dragon finally reveals herself as the light from the outside, exposing the beast in its entirety. Sona noticed where this dragon was looking. Worrying for her pawn, Sona jumps in front of Saji and places both arms out. This gigantic, blue dragon, possibly the size of a 747 passenger liner, stopped in place, looking down at the little devil. Opening its mouth, the dragon began to speak as it continued to stare deeply into Saji's eyes. I smell a dragon, then this dragon speaks of one I hold in contempt, so casually. At this point in time, little dragon, you will either submit to me, or die. Saji tilts his head in confusion. Um, hi, Saji here, what do you mean by submit? The teen was barely able to get these words out as the dragon began to smile, showing off its large and sharp fangs. It's been a very long time since a dragon, weak as you might be, has come along my way. The blue western dragon seemed to look at Saji, from head to toe. Yes, you will do. As I said, submit or I will end your existence, alongside your little friends. Momo's eyes widened at this proclamation. Screaming back at the dragon in fury, Momo wrapped her arms around a stunned and stupefied Saji. You can't have my Saji, he is mine. The large dragon tilted its head and then smiled warmly. You think that you could compete with my beauty, little devil. The entire peerage now tilt their heads in confusion. Does this dragon want to mate with Saji? Instantly, the large blue dragon began to glow with a blinding light. After a quick flash, the dragon seemed to have disappeared, leaving the silhouette of a female human in its place. Long blue hair, pale skin, dark blue eyes and a very voluptuous body, this is what has replaced the large beast. Winking at Saji, the now human-looking dragon pointed at the teen with a motioning finger, beckoning him to come to her. Having enough of this nonsense, Sona speaks up. Tiamat, he is my pawn. Besides, we've only come for information regarding Issei Hyodo. Ignoring the high-class devil, the now-known Tiamat, begins to walk closer towards Saji and Momo. Chapter 40. Yandere, Scene, Yusaka Castle, Morning, Kyoto, Japan. We begin in the dinning area, once again. This time, Yusaka and Issei have joined. The couple look to both have damp hair, suggesting a previous bath as they silently ate their egg and toast. Interestingly enough, both also had a continuous blush, one that never seemed to fade. Kuroka is looking back and forth at both Issei and Yusaka, grinning the entire time. Ophis was preoccupied with the fox princess, Kunuo, as the poor girl seemed to have seen far too much for her innocent little mind to process. Do not fret, sensei. Perhaps we should enjoy another epic moment involving the Opai dragon. Throwing her little arms in the air, the fox girl seemed to cheer up at the notion of watching her favorite television show. Good idea, my pretty student, Ophis Chan. For we shall continue your training. Ophis, turn on the TV. Nodding very seriously, the infinite dragon god grabs the remote control, while staring at it for a moment while remembering how Kuno was operating it earlier, yes, sensei. I just push on this button ever so lightly and, buzz the first thing that was heard, coming from the television, was enough to gain everyone's attention all at once. Four heads all turn toward the screen and jaws begin to drop. I'll smite you and stuff. None other than Irina was the woman who spoke these words. She was standing next to a beautiful and blonde woman, wearing white and gold armor. On the bottom of the screen, there was a heading. Previous interview with Gabrielle and her teammate, Brave Saint Irina Shido. Opai Dragon Hunt has begun. We will be following teams and interviewing pantheons associated with Hyodo Issei, the Red Dragon Emperor of Domination, aka, the Opai Dragon. Issei then spit out a gulp of coffee. Wah. Cough cough cough, what in the? Cough cough, Irina is with, cough, that scary angel, Gabriel. Ophis, Yusaka and Kuroka all turn their heads toward a gasping Issei. Patting his back lightly, Yusaka asks the question everyone wants to know. Issei-kun, era era, take a deep breath. I must ask, darling, do you know that, scary, as you put it angel on the TV just now. Composing himself, Issei begins to turn pale as he shudders once more. 
Well, ladies, to be completely honest with you, well. So, Michael Sama, the leader of heaven, well, he has this sister you see. Issei shudders once more, Yasaka begins to frown and slowly brings Issei closer into her as her tails begin their usual wrapping around the team. Era, Era, Issei, go ahead, you said she is Michael's sister, go on, nodding, Issei takes a moment to enjoy the warmth of Yasaka while taking a deep breath. Well, there was this one time, when Michael bestowed this holy sword to me, back at Akino's temple. Shortly after that, I started noticing random flashes whenever I would be alone, like camera flashes. At first, I thought this was either someone just messing with me. Then after a time, I started to think it was probably that no good sensei, Azazel, was sending someone to study me or something. Well, that was until I finally had enough and one day, I thought I would try and trap the ass hat who was taking photos of me, so I waited. I fired a small dragon shot toward the flash, only for the attack to be absorbed in some kind of holy shield. Well, long story short, Gabriel introduced herself and at the same time, proceeded to declare me as her. Ophis, Kuroka, Yusaka and now even Kuno, all have widened eyes, waiting to hear the rest of the story, in great anticipation. Taking another deep breath, Issei continued as he shuddered once more. She said something about how she wanted to take me away, somewhere far, just the, two of us. She kept calling me her, pet. Well, let's just say, the moment she pulled out a dog collar, with my name on the tag, I ran for my life. Issei begins to rock back and forth as if he was having some sort of post-traumatic memory which caused Yusaka to tighten her tails a bit in response. It was like something from a nightmare. This beautiful angel, turning, turning, dot omg, I can't believe I am going to say this, but, it was like something from a bad yandere anime and it was scary as hell. Pure nightmare fuel, seeing the grin on her face as she tossed golden light spears, blocking my escape attempts. To make matters worse, she must have constructed some kind of barrier as I wasn't able to call for help. But in the end, she gave up, I guess. Seemed like hours of this cat and mouse shit. Issei now looks at each girl in the room. Yandere chicks are scary. I used to be a fan, really, I was. I used to own anime and novels that had such themes. Well, that was until I saw the real thing. After that day, I threw everything I had regarding the theme, in the trash haven't gone back since. You know what? I think Gabriel is insane and very dangerous and to be perfectly honest, if she is coming after me, with Irina, well, I don't think I would stand a chance. Issei's nervousness seemed to completely dissolve into a look of pure rage. If monsters like her are hunting me down, that could put the lot of you in danger. I can't allow that. I, Erm, I should go. Yasaka's tails tighten as the woman begins to sport a look of dissatisfaction. Ophis tilts her head as usual. Kuroka pulls her jaw from the floor and is about to say something as the Nako starts to frown, that was until Kuno screamed. No, Papa Kun, no, no, the little fox runs from her location and tackles a wrapped Issei into a hug. This goes on while Kuroka is thinking of something to say, but the Nako ran into the problem of catching her own tongue. Yusaka then pulls Issei's chin up, forcing him to look into her golden eyes. Listen to me very carefully, for I will only tell you this once. Issei took a large gulp as his eyes were beginning to tear up. You are mine, leaving, leaving is not an option. Not ever. Again, the fox queen was uncharacteristically raising her voice which intensified her commanding presence. If you care about this family, you will become stronger. Do you honestly think that I would just casually infuse my own spiritual energy into just anyone? How dare you insult me? I am Yusaka of Kyoto and you, my wayward little fox, belong to me. Never speak of abandoning this family again. Silence was only momentary as Ophis spoke up. Secure UT, clearly your previous injuries must have created some memory lapses. With that, allow me to remind you of a simple truth. I am Ophis. Like the fox over there, you also belong to me. Again, I am Ophis. Need I say more, Issei? Attempting to reply to both women, Issei was interrupted once again, this time by Dedrake. Partner, have you forgotten? You are among creatures that could easily be considered, gods, in their own right. Not to mention, we are the Red Dragon Emperor. Running away is out of the question, 
No, I say, we fight, we protect these good people. Either way, if and when they do track us, eventually, they will be led here. Who knows what could happen in our absence. Perhaps the hunters will use your new family against you, like kidnapping them for your return, it could happen. So, instead of running away, rather, stay here and get stronger. De Drake's words made complete sense to everyone in the room. Completely gobsmacked with a multitude of emotions, Issei had only one thought running through his head as tears began to stream down and fall onto Yusaka's tails. My family now, my home now, stick with them, yes. We end the scene with the entirety of the room all hugging the entrapped Issei as he breaks down with emotion. Thanks for watching like share and subscribe for the next parts one got in my storage.